I've only been there a matter of uh, a few months, and Tim Bogosian and Mike Phelps had gone to the the large radiolog radiology conference in Chicago, uh, which is an annual event, um, and they came back and they were full of a new concept they'd seen from UK EMI down some small alleyway in the conference by a girl called Houndfield. They'd seen tomography. And they were so excited about it. They could see this was the way forward. We're going away from planar images where everything is superimposed to depth information. And they were really were sparked up on it. And while I was there for the remaining months, they were mainly focusing on X-ray tomography, which they were trying to see if they could do it any better than or differently from Hounsfield. But my colleague who shared the same office as me, Hoffman, I'd been working on a, a planar device with detectors. But subsequently, and maybe we'll talk about it later, he'd used the detectors he'd got and began then to construct the first one of the first tomographic PET scanners. The second part of the sabbatical was to go to the MGH in Boston. And there, a guy called Gordon Brownell and Charlie Burnham had been working on constructing a positron camera. We were looking for higher spatial resolution and ideally tomography. Now, these isotopes we're talking about, like oxygen 15, emit positrons, they're positron emitters. And that means when they undergo radioactive decay, they emit a positron which is a positively charged electron-like particle. And in matter, the positron doesn't get very far because they're soon attracted by electrons being oppositely charged. They both, uh, as a result of the attraction, they annihilate these two electrons and the positron. As a consequence of the annihilation, two gamma rays are emerged at 180 degrees to each other. So I've got to, if I take a breath of radioactive oxygen coming out of my head, a pairs of gamma rays at 180 degrees to each other, uh, all, 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 over 360 degrees. And the positron camera makes use of that in that it doesn't have detectors just, just on one side of the body, it has detectors on two sides of the body. And when one detector fires and the other one fires simultaneously, they know in between here a positron was captured by an electron. They know specifically. So that allowed you to certainly to pinpoint the position more accurately. As a result of breathing the radioactive oxygen and taking the images in Boston, when I began to process the data in the middle of the night, I saw the distribution of radioactivity in my brain. And I believe that's the first image ever recorded of the regional metabolism of the human brain. Where we looked at a whole series of, of blood flow traces as well as the, to have the image, and it was so excited to be able to see that that actually you did have a result of um, predicting. In fact, you would be able to see this from the animal work, and you would have a specific image which would look something like human brain metabolism, and to see that was quite quite something.